As, as Fergus said, I have a background in uh, NGOs and in bottom-up initiatives uh, in urban development and for the last two years I've been working with a large uh, background organization on establishing smart city strategies and coordinating these across the country and I was asked to give you a brief overview of the situation uh, in, in Hungary. Um, this is an image from, uh, uh, from last summer, uh, in fact almost a year ago, uh, on one of the bridges, uh, a nice piece of infrastructure from uh, from uh, the monarchy uh, era, from Budapest. And it was the first day uh, when this bridge was closed down for uh, maintenance work. And this was a spontaneous party that was uh, uh, announced on Facebook uh, by a couple of uh, cyclists. And it turned into a two months long continuous uh, festival on the bridge, uh, which was one of the best public spaces at the time. And I think if I had to stop here, this would be my thesis that infrastructure, infrastructure is the commons of the future and this is what we should be talking about how we organize and how we govern this commons and what we do about that. Um, the interesting thing in this case was that this uh, two months festival was first uh, denounced by the mayor of Budapest as a sort of a liberal hippie festival that, is, uh, that shouldn't be tolerated. Um, and then it grew into a sort of a transition that by the end of the festival there was a promise that this summer each weekend the bridge would be closed down to open it up for, uh, for parties and the last weekend uh, just yesterday and the day before uh, also this last weekend was the first weekend when the bridge was closed down, uh, closed down again. So uh, when we talk about governing cities, this is how uh, you know, cities need to learn and, and that our cities are trying to learn and move from positions not only in Hungary but elsewhere as well. Typically when you talk about smart cities, uh, we're mentioning projects in urban governance such as these ones, uh, which are the so-called back office project of cities, which are to do with how cities manage their own systems, their utilities, their infrastructure, and we have these in most Hungarian cities to some degree or another. We also have several projects in Hungarian cities which are more facing the inhabitants of cities, so, uh, for, so citizens and editors. Um, and so if you look at uh, from one perspective, you could say that a lot of Hungarian cities, even though they are rather small, uh, have implemented several smart city initiatives. Now there's a number of issues with that, I, and I think um, these are again issues which are not only present in Hungary. Almost all of these projects are fragmented, so there is very little integration between the individual projects. You might be doing a street camera system and you might be doing a community biking system and there's no connection between these two or any other two. Uh, most of these projects are funding driven, uh, paid for by European or central uh, government funds with no incentives to actually create a, a viable business model. The market is very rarely present in actually seeing these solutions, which really has a lot of consequences in the way they are operated. There's a general lack of competence in municipalities. Uh, there is no Hungarian municipality that I know of which has a CTO or a CIO position. Uh, in, uh, IT services are usually thought of as computers in the municipality. So there is a lack of knowledge in operating uh, uh, such systems. And as I said, there's a lack of operation model and business model. So there's no dedicated organization across the silos and departments that would be dealing with implementing such services or working with the UX or the user environment of the city. So in general, if you would sum it up, there's a missing ecosystem uh, when there are several parts lying around. And this is where my job and our job is, uh, is actually situated. We're trying to create this ecosystem. Some of you might have seen this slide that I presented two years ago uh, at this conference as well. Um, this, I think, really sums up the, the situation. On the left side, you see Uber, which I'm sure all of you. On the right side, there is a bottom-up uh, transportation network very similar to Uber that was uh, uh, drawn up on Facebook in two or three days' time uh, at the time of uh, transportation strikes in Budapest. Now, my question is, why didn't this one become Uber uh, when it was five years before Uber was even established? And the reason is because there's no ecosystem. The city didn't recognize this uh, project as something which is enormously valuable, where citizens are coming together to actually replace a failing uh, network of transportation, and they're coming up with a viable operational model that helped them share their infrastructure create a supplementary network of transportation. If the city had any sort of concept of including this in their infrastructure, they could have supported it with data, they could have supported it with taking, up it, in, taking it up in metropolitan transportation system, and they would have a successful global business, uh, and the data as well. So we see a lot of digital projects which are labeled smart projects, uh, but I think this is the kind of smallest and probably the least interesting uh, of all of these categories. We see some processes that are done intelligently with the support of IT technologies within or, or outside of government. But I think what we all should be looking at is creating a smart 
ecosystem that can help bottom-up projects, uh, business ideas, and various stakeholders get into and stay in urban governance. That's as, as at least important as actually being able to get into urban governance. So we're working on these areas that I sh uh, I've shown as issues to help Hungarian cities and cities in the region to establish strategies that will actually do exactly uh, build these partnerships, build this knowledge, uh, build these business models that help them uh, uh, change the way they operate. Now Budapest, uh, just to see you, uh, show you a case, is a difficult one. Uh, it has 23 municipalities and also a city hall, so the government, which results in a lot of conflicts and difficulties uh, across the city. Of course, you have the public utility companies as well. And each stakeholder is weak enough to be blocked by the other stakeholders. So most of the successful initiatives that are happening in the city uh, that could be called smart are actually coming from the outside, such as this one, when the Hungarian Cyclist Club installed a sensor on one of the uh, very busy boulevards in the downtown uh, area of the city. And just by being able to show how many cyclists are passing by every day, they were able to uh, uh, change the way the city thought about cyclists and it became much more uh, cyclist friendly after not being able to carry on the arguments which said that cycling is just a luxury hobby across the city. This also shows on the numbers of cyclists. As the policies change, you can see a steady improvement in the number of people using bicycles. Of course, when you go to smaller cities, this is easier because the municipalities are smaller and it's easier for them to integrate their services and their offers. And we're working at all scales. And we're especially working at the small scales uh, because in the region, in the Visegrad region and in Hungary as well, most of the settlements are small, below 50,000 and sometimes even below 10,000 inhabitants. And my organization now, uh, Lechner Knowledge Center, which is a, a background organization working in architecture planning and policy and IT services, we've developed a number of tools that help cities to achieve these goals. Um, the first one is a strategy model and a roadmap that helps cities establish uh, um, sort of a smart strategy or, or update their existing strategies to a, to a smart operational model that of course starts with an analysis and then uh, sets up an organization which would take care of the actually long-term long uh, operation of the system and then a strategic, a strategic planning objective with action plans so you don't just uh, do projects without a larger context. Secondly, and closely related to that, we set up a monitoring system which is uh, compliance with, uh, compliant with most, uh, um, the most indexing systems that helps cities evaluate their progress, also gives them an initial audit of their situation, and then it validates their projects as well. It helps that uh, Lechner is also the biggest uh, data owner in the country. We, have the, we are operating the largest uh, geospatial uh, um, and, and, and urban database. Unite, unifying a lot of databases from statistical offices through cities to infrastructure and utilities providers so we can develop a lot of tools on this platform and we can provide a lot of data for various stakeholders to help that so that's also an, an open tool uh, that helps cities and various stakeholders uh, plan their strategies and finally something that might be interesting to you too as well we recently launched uh, a platform that is a, a, um, a database of smart projects in, uh, in the most popular categories that you can see here across the world uh, it's an open database, so you're welcome to submit your programs, and if you're interested in what's going on in Hungarian cities, you can find several ones. We're continuously updating this, and this will turn into a project marketplace in a year or so, so we have high hopes to, to kind of bring some ideas and also learn, uh, help Hungarian cities learn uh, throughout this process. Just to finish up, three comments on, on how these things could be done. The first is about risk management. We've, uh, I think uh, some of the presentations already discussed that uh, this year. This is, I'm sure, familiar to most of you, the Gartner hype cycle. Uh, of course, a lot of these technologies and solutions fail over time, or at least they kind of do not reach the expectations that they start off with. And I think it's very important for cities to be able to consider and mitigate these risks. Uh, so instead of going into risky projects, uh, vendor lock-ins and, and uh, you know, uh, introducing large-scale programs and then failing them, they should look at what are the proper frameworks, such as lit or limited environments where they can look at what's actually viable in the long run and what's, what's producing uh, proper financial and social impact. One is locally relevant solutions. Uh, I think we're in a region uh, where it's as relevant to look at uh, Northern Europe and Western Europe and the US as it is to look at India and Africa, uh, especially with the villages and small settlements which are facing very significant social and economic challenges. And some of the smart solutions there should be uh, about much simpler and much, sometimes much more radical technologies, such as this uh, drone, autonomous drone network in Rwanda that launched last year 
that is actually replacing the non-existing road network and producing, uh, providing a network of postal services and medical supplies uh, across villages in a, in a country with very little uh, physical infrastructure. And the last one, probably the most important one, is the emphasis on regional collaboration. The countries in this region are way too small for any business to, uh, to operate sustainably um, in, on the level of the market of one country. We are a country of 10 million, we have countries of 5 million people, uh, Poland is an exception. But if there is regional collaboration and there is cross-compatible uh, systems and platforms in our cities, uh, helps the region appear on the world stage as well as an, as an innovator and the, and the potential marketplace with similar cities and similar agendas. Thank you.